Hello and welcome to the 18th video in my series on getting started with AutoCAD. My name is Christian and in this video we're going to talk about plotting from paper space. Please note I'm using AutoCAD 2015. If you're not using it as well, yours is going to look different than mine. Let's go ahead and get started. So let's start by switching this drawing from model space to paper space. You'll see here I've got several, um, several views of paper space pulled up here. And I've got this, this model set up to show up in different ways. You can see here in the model itself, let's go back to the model here. We have a ton of different layers, a ton, okay, a few different layers. And they each control different aspects of this drawing, uh, which happens to be a, a printed circuit board, um, both the top and the bottom sides. And what we want to do is we want to break this down so that we can plot just specific layers of it uh, at specific times and that way we can we can put together our drawing set now i've already done that in these views and you can see here this is our top silk screen we've got our top solder mask we've got our, our top metal we've got our uh, bottom metal bottom solder mask bottom silk screen fabrication drawings and the composite plot which is basically everything that's in the drawing and over here we have a bill of materials and some other stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and plot. Now when we plot from, uh, from paper space as opposed to model space, you want to make sure that you always plot one to one. And the reason is, is because you want to plot your drawing the same size of sheet that you have logically set up in your, in your, uh, in your paper space. And we can double check that really quick here by right clicking on the view and going to Page Setup Manager. And if we go to Modify, you can see here, I'm actually plotting this to a sheet, an eight and a half by 11 sheet, uh, and it's gonna be monochrome. So let's go ahead, and it's also going to be one-to-one -one, uh, by default and in this view, which is perfect. It's exactly the way we want it to be. We'll let the, uh, let the viewport itself handle any scaling that we need to do and everything else we can leave one-to-one. -one. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off this, uh, whoops. Turn off the uh, the grid in, in the viewport there. It's a little easier to see. So in order to do this, we go ahead and just type plot, just like in model space, and it will bring up a very similar looking window here. And in this window, we can leave the defaults because that's already been set, right? These, these things we've already set, they match the, the layout and that's perfect. And then you just go ahead and make sure that your fit to paper is not checked and scale is one to one and click OK uh, after you select your plot source. So we're going to go ahead and use DWG to PDF and we're going to go ahead and click OK. And I'm just going to save this to the desktop here really quick. So there we go. And there it is. There's our plot. Now you'll notice one thing here is we've got this side that's cut off. So the question is, why is this side cut off? And the answer to that is actually pretty straightforward. It's, uh, you'll notice that in this, it looks just fine, but if you go to the page setup manager, we go to modify, you'll notice that our plotter isn't named. And because of that, we're actually working uh, with at a different origin model space or paper space itself has a different origin than than what we plotted it to so we can go ahead and change that really quick let's go ahead and modify it and we'll pick dwg to pdf and you'll notice here as we change this the paper size stays the same but when we click ok everything's going to shift over and again this is because paper space is going to have a different uh, axis of origin, they, the zero comma zero space is going to actually change. So you can see here, we go ahead and click OK, and you'll notice that our sheet itself, our viewport and everything that's in it is now shifted off to the side. And in order to get that back on, we can go ahead and just zoom in here. Unfortunately, you can't snap to the corner of models of paper space. That's a source of some frustration for me, but but let's go ahead and replot this now. So let's go ahead and plot. DWG to PDF comes in selected, and we're going to go ahead and click OK. And I'm just going to replace this one here 
Yes, I'd like to override it. And here it is. Now we'll see we've got this border and it's complete all the way around. So the thing to remember is that just because it shows up here right doesn't necessarily mean it's going to plot right. You have to make sure that what your um, your page setup manager is set to, to to be for this sheet is the same as what the plot dialog is set to do because they could exist in different spaces. Their point of origin could be different and that can dramatically affect the way things plot. So if you're plotting to a printer, it works the same way. It's just a matter of selecting which plot device you do. As a general rule, I always plot to PDF. And the reason is because it means that I have a second chance to take a look at everything before it goes to the plotter. And that is really beneficial when it comes to saving paper and saving time. So, and you can always plot from a PDF just fine. So if it looks good in PDF, it looks good on paper. That's, that's, my, that's my rule. Anyhow, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. And if you thought this video was good, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you thought this video was life-changing, go ahead and subscribe and I'll bring you more of them. And I will see you in the next video.